Hi there, and welcome back to my channel. In this video, I'll be taking you through Lagrange multipliers. So, as part of application of the differential, you've gone through linear approximation and also finding tangent planes and normal lines. So, we continue from there to Lagrange multipliers. If this is the first time you've been on this channel, kindly subscribe to support and please watch this video to the end so you understand every part of the video. So when you say Lagrange multipliers, what, what what are they? Like, what do we use it for? Okay, what do we use the multiplier for? Now, these are concepts which we call optimization. Optimization, okay? If you want to optimize a particular thing, what does it mean? You want to gain or you want to yield the maximum effect of it. So optimization can be in what? For the minimum side or what? Minimum or what? Maximum, okay? Maybe if you want to optimize something, you are trying to what? get the maximum yield, but you need something we call a constraint. You need a constraint, okay? Because we have certain materials or certain system where you need to optimize it to a very minimum what? length, right? And some systems which you have to optimize it to the maximum yield. So this term constraint is what is going to guide you as you are optimizing a particular function or a particular situation so an application of partial derivatives and also differentials is to optimize real life real life situations okay real life situations and also real life scenarios using differentiation so you have to model the scenario then after you get your constraints then you will find your optimization so in calculus one, when we are dealing with only one variable, you realize that whenever you find your, they give you your constraints and your function, because the function is a single variable, it's very easier to what, make some substitutions and what, you move on. But for here, it's multiple variable. So given an equation, you cannot be making just substitutions, which will be a very complicated equations and you can't even solve them. That is why we introduce what we call Lagrange multipliers. Lagrange multipliers. So now, given any function, let's say a function f of what x, y, z, okay? So this is a function maybe you want to optimize, okay? Then you'll be given what you call constraints, as I said, as g of x, y, z is equal to a known constant k. So this known constant k will be the, should I say, an envelope or something like the limit to which you can what, optimize the function okay so before we can find our parameters okay so the goal is to find parameters which we will need to yield the maximum what, value okay so before we can get the maximum value we need to get several equations and through the equations we can solve to get what, our parameters so under lagrange multipliers you need to always get or even Whenever you are solving a system of equation, if we have three variables, right? If you have three variables, we will need what? Three equations, right? If you have what? Four variables, we need four equations. Is that not it? So to solve and get a unique solution. But in this case, before I can solve optimization in multivariable functions, I need to introduce a new constant, which we call lambda, okay? Lambda. So this lambda is what we call the Lagrange multiplier. Lagrange multiplier. So this multiplier helps us to solve most of what it helps us to solve actually optimization in multivariable functions. So how is this useful? So whenever you are given any function as well as its constraints, you have some fixed number of equations you should get. So the equations you have to get um, delta, that is the gradient value, sorry, the gradient vectors of what? Our function f of x, y, z, okay, should be equal to lambda, which is a Lagrange multiplier, multiplying the gradient vector of what our of our constraint. So g of x, y, and z. Okay. So this should give us series of what equation. So you find fx, right? So let's say fx of what this function should be equal to the lambda gx of what our constraints we can also get fy of this function 
is equal to lambda gy of what our constraint. Likewise, fz of our function should be equal to lambda gz of our function. So depending on the number of parameters within your function, you should get what the corresponding number of what equations using the Lagrange multiplier and the constraint. Then finally, you should get, because you have the constraint, sorry, the multiplier here, the variables become what? The variables become four. Therefore, you have to introduce the last equation, which will be the constraint itself, right? So when you are writing this equation, you focus on the function itself. But if you want to write your fourth equation, which is always a constraint, so always the constraint forms part of what our equation. Always the constraint forms part of our equation. And it is what we will finally use to even estimate our x, y, z, or any independent variable of the function. So I have a problem here for us to solve so that you understand this concept very well. So let me clean this part here. So it says that find the dimensions, okay? Find the dimensions of the box with the largest volume. If the total surface area is 64 centimeters squared, find the dimensions of the box with the largest volume, okay? If the total surface area is 64. So actually, Lagrange multipliers and even the concept of optimization as an important subject matter in mass. It has a very real life applications in most engineering systems. So you may see that maybe you are doing calculus and you don't know the usefulness, but I tell you, this is very useful in estimation of engineering systems. You need to optimize what, everything that you do. You need to optimize everything that you do. So solution. So how do you solve such a problem? So let me take you through. So first of all, you said the dimensions of the box with the largest volume. So meaning you identify this as the function you want to optimize, largest volume. We are finding the dimensions of the box. That will give us the largest volume. If, so when you see the if, then you mean that the constraint is coming, right? So if the total surface area is 64 centimeters squared, so meaning we are being guided by the surface area given. Otherwise, it doesn't make sense for you to find the largest volume to which limit, okay? So the constraint is always what given. And you see in real life, the constraint may be your what, your finances, because it's the amount you have that can predict the maximum infrastructure you can what, put up, okay? So the constraint is always a limiting factor to how far or something can be done. So that's what I'm saying that it's very applicable in real life situations. So find the dimensions of the box with the largest volume. So this is a function you want to what, um, optimize. So you know that volume of um, a box will surely take three inputs. So it's length times sort, um, height times weight. But in this case, let's use x, y, z to make our equation nicer. So meaning that f of x, y, z, right? A function of our three, three inputs is what we want to optimize. And what is the volume of a box? Volume is always equal to what? x, y, z. Is that not it? x, y, z. So this is our function, which we want to optimize. We write the function down. The next thing to do is to write our constraints in an equation form. The constraints is surface area. Remember, surface area of a cuboid is the same as what? F of. But one thing to take note of, the box can be a cuboid or what? Cube. But it's always advisable to assume it to be a what? A cuboid. If it happens to be a cube, then all our, our parameters will be equal. Don't assume that it's a, I mean, a cube and you make all of them being xx. No, no, we don't do that. So we assume that it is a cuboid always. So that if it happens to be a cube, then our parameters will itself by equation, provided you solve it correctly, will have all its parameters equal. Okay. So now we are having the constraints which we normally represent as g of x. Okay. So we have g of is taking surface area of cube is also taking three inputs x, y, z. Okay. So you know that that one will give us what the surface area of a cube. So for the surface area of a cube. It's always two times what the expression x y plus what y z plus what x z. Okay, you find the area of each component and you multiply it by what, two. Okay, so this is our constraint. Remember, it was given as sixty four. So I can write two x y plus two y z 
plus 2xz is equal to 64, right? I can take my 2 out by finding xy plus yz plus xz is equal to 32. So this happens to be my constraint. This happens to be my constraint. So now I have my constraint down, right? Yes. Now, the next thing to do is to find xyz. 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 Do you think that these two equations are enough? It's not enough. And even the first one is just a function. So let's see how we can solve this problem using the Lagrange multipliers as well as applying the constraint here. So with this, you, as I said, you just write our general notation, the gradient vector of what f of x, y, z is always equal to a gradient vector of what our constraint x, y, z multiplied by what our Lagrange multiplier lambda. Okay, so for the gradient vector, as I said, this is a multiplicable function, meaning you are going to take the partial derivative with respect to each of the components. So the partial derivative with respect to x is equal to what y, z, right? Because y, z is a constant. In, when we are differentiated with respect to x, so we get yz is equal to lambda. Then the gradient vector of our g, which is our constraint, we are going to handle this part. We are going to handle this part, right? So this is now our constraint. So all the gradient vector with respect to our constraint. So with respect to our constraint, the gradient vector is simply equal to, with respect to x, you know that here, so let me do it this way y z is equal to lambda open bracket. So when I differentiate my um, constraint with respect to x, everything which is not x is also a constant to be zero. So automatically y z is zero, but here when I differentiate here with respect to x, I get y, okay? I get y. Then here when I differentiate x with respect to, this with respect to x, I get what z. So y plus what z, is that not it? Yeah, so I get my first equation. So mm -hmm. this becomes my actual equation is what I want to tackle. Then I'll move to, I mean, differentiating with respect to what? Y. Differentiating with respect to Y, this X will be zero. And I'll get um, here, when I differentiate here with respect to Y, I'll get what? X. But first, we always do for the function before the constraint. So for the function, if I differentiate with respect to Y, what am I getting? I'm getting X, right? X is equal to lambda multiplied by, with respect to Y here, I'll get X plus what? Z. Is that not it? Equation two. Then when I come here with respect to z for my function, I'll get xy. xy is equal to lambda multiplying with respect to z to xy will be zero. So I get y plus what x. Is that not it? Yes, third equation three. So now I have four variables, three equations. What would be my final equation for me to solve this system? That would be my constraint itself. And that is what I labeled that equation two. So you let me bring it here. So I have xy plus yz plus xz is equal to 32 as my fourth equation so now with these four equations i'm expected to find the parameters x y z so that i can estimate the largest volume this box cannot contain okay so let's see how we do it for at this point you just have to open your eyes you need a third eye as a mathematics student because once you reach here it's a normal mathematics which normal algebra which you have to apply it's a manipulation so now you want to find x, y, z, okay? For that reason, it's always advisable to make your equation on the left side become equal so that we can equate what this has, okay? So now how do I make my equation on the left side equal? This is y, z, right? This is, this is x, z. This, this is y, z, this is x, z, okay? Then this is x, y, okay? So how do I, I mean, manipulate this equation here for, me to get something equal so now this is what i'm going to do for this side to be equal to this this is yz this is xz this one is lacking x this is lacking what y so i can multiply my first equation with what x so multiplying my equation one with x so multiplying multiplying equation one by x i'm getting what um x by hot yz will be equal to x multiplying hot lambda hot y plus z like this yeah so this gives x y z 
is equal to lambda x multiplying y plus what z. We've got a new equation. So we can also multiply our second equation by what y so that we get multiplying the second equation by y, we also get x y z will be equal to lambda multiplying what y multiplying what x plus 2. Okay, x plus 2. Then finally, I'll multiply the last one by what z. Is that not it? So that would be x, y, z. So be equal to lambda z multiplying y plus x, right? So this is z, not 2. This is z. So right now, we've got the left hand side to be equal. Then I can go ahead and see that this here is equal to this here, as well as this here is equal to. I can make any of them being equal, and I'll use that to find my um unknowns. So equating, let me make this one to um five, six, equation seven. Okay. So let me say that equating um uh, equation five being equal to equation what six something like that. I'll have what I have here, which is x multiplying lambda multiplying y plus z is equal to yes, it's equal to y plus z is equal to my lambda multiplying what y multiplying x plus z like this. Okay. So once I have this, once I have this, what do I do? I expand, right? So I'll put my lambda out. Okay. So I'll put my lambda out. When I put my lambda out, I'll have x, y plus what x, z, right? Then I'll bring this on the left side. So that I have minus lambda x, y plus what x, z plus y, z. Okay. So x, y plus y, z plus y, z is equal to zero so i can factorize lambda out here i'll factor lambda out here so lambda out i'll have what um this one x y plus x z then i'll have what um minus what x y minus x z minus x y Minus x y minus y z, right? Minus y z is equal to zero. So from this, you know that I can simplify so that I'll get lambda. So my x y and x y will go. So I have x z minus what y z is that not it? Is equal to zero. So you can see that lambda is equal to zero. Then lambda is equal to zero, right? Then I'll have x z minus y z will also be equal to zero. Therefore, x z is equal to what? y z, and z and z will cancel. Therefore, I have x to be equal to what? y. So I know that s is equal to what? y. Is that not it? And lambda is what? Zero, right? So once I ignore this, I can also equate my equation six and seven at this point. Equation six and seven. Let me equate that two also. So when I equate those ones two, I'm going to get something like um, lambda y x plus z is equal to lambda z y plus what x right so here too i'll simply lambda will be out i have x y plus y z is equal to lambda open bracket z y plus z x or x z yep so here i'll say lambda open bracket y x or x y plus y z right M minus i'm bringing this on the left side so i'm factorizing it straight away so minus zy minus zx is equal to zero so obviously here to lambda is equal to what, zero but what i have inside here will be what you know that i have xy so i have yz and zy this one will go away so i'll have yx minus what zx will be equal to what zero okay yx and zx will be equal to zero for that reason i'll have yx to be equal to zx x and x cancels i'll have y to be equal to what z so now with this equation i know that x equals y y is also equal to z what does that mean x is also equal to what z so therefore i'll have let me write it here x equals y is equal to z okay x equals y is equal to z so now that i've gone to know x equals y equals z i'll simply go to my constraints back again then i'll put it in it so my constraint says that the 
it says xy plus yz plus xz is equal to 32 and now i've got to know that my x y and z they are all equal so if they are all equal then i i will just write x y here so let me choose all of them to be y okay choosing all of them to be y because they are all equal so they are all y so here i'll get y squared here to so i get y squared here to so i get y squared i'll get y squared is equal to 32. so this will give us 3y squared is equal to 32 my y is simply equal to 32 on 3 square root of what this expression and what are we getting so this will give us plus or minus 3.266 plus or minus 3.266 plus or minus so now we are getting dimension of a box to be negative that's not possible so dimension of a box which is magnitude should always be positive so just take the positive value then you move on okay so therefore our volume which you want to optimize volume which is the same as f of x y z becomes f of what 3.266 comma 3.266 comma 3.266 then it should give us what x y z which is the same as what 3.266 times 3.266 times 3.266 right so what are you getting when you multiply this on your calculator you should be expecting something like 34.8376 okay so this becomes our what our volume right this becomes our volume so thank you for being with me in this video and don't forget to like subscribe and also share